Hello boys and girls, it is time for part 16 of the EJ25 build. Yeah, it's that many. I thought it would be maybe 10 or 12. And there's more. So in today's episode, I'm going to finish up the special oil pen. It is special. And then it's flex fuel time. I'm actually going to... I changed my mind. I am going to go with flex fuel, the whole kit from Cobb Tuning, and decided to make an install video on it. It's going to be probably two parts, but a few minutes of the second part of the, of the video, once I start on the flex fuel install, what you're going to see me do, turns out it's going to be unnecessary for me. And I'm talking about keeping or getting rid of the fuel dampers. So according to Cobb, they say to get rid of them both on uh, feed line and return fuel that is. Later on, I talk to my tuner and I decide to keep them both. But I decided to include whatever I did. I basically removed them from the fuel lines, both dampers. And I decided to include this the, in this video. So for you, if you decide to keep them, you, you don't do any of that, whatever I'm going to do. And for those guys that decide to get rid of them, there you go. So talk to your tuner, do your research and decide if you're going to keep those dampers or not. Also, cap tuning instructions say to put the flex fuel sensor on the pressure side along with the fuel pressure sensor. I decided to go with the fuel sensor on the pressure side uh, of the fuel rail and the flex fuel sensor is going to go on the return. So you could say I'm kind of doing my own custom install. I basically did what my tuner recommended and it did work out. That's all I can say. You're going to see that in future episodes. All right, guys. So as always, I need you to subscribe, like the video. If you did, hit the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Or, or is the bell there? Is it is it there or there? And enjoy the video. All right. Let me show you what I've done so far. I've been fighting with this oil pen. Now I found two things. I might have found the problem. I'll show you that later, but the pen. So I did cut out the baffles. I, I'll show you that in a second. But I also had to massage it a bit. Okay, it took me hours to actually fit it all the way up to the block. Let me see if you can... If I can actually show you this. See, after I cut the baffles out, I had another issue, which was the actual pickup was hitting the bottom of the pen. So I had to... I'm holding it with my leg. So I had to do this, basically damage it, massage it, as some would say, and make room for the pickup. There is about a quarter of an inch, maybe more, of space between the pickup and the bottom of the pan so this should be good but this took me quite some time okay so as you can see this was cut out in the bottom baffle there so this would fit like that right about there and as you can see another issue a major one was the bottom pan so this one apparently it's a tiny bit deeper, but yeah, so this is what it looks like now. I All I got to do now is weld it up. That's all. And another issue that I, it might have been an issue, I don't know. Okay, when you, when you install this, the pickup to, to the block, it attaches in three with three bolts. So, but if you look closer, it took me a while to notice this, but if you look close enough and you kind of look at the level of this top of the bracket and this rounded area, the flange, I don't know, whatever you want to call this, it actually, it used to, not anymore, it used to angle towards each other. So this was slightly this way and this was slightly this this way. That's why I grinded this away 
so now they're both even and because of that there was a gap tiny gap on this side so there's a rubber seal that goes here around here and there was a tiny gap there was no gap here but there was a tiny gap on this side and that might have been catching air yeah moroso so anyway so i grinded this down so this goes up and uh, you know this would fix that angle so this is nice and flush right now so that might have been the main issue i don't know it might have also been the oil pump we won't know maybe a combination of both maybe a small leak here and uh, the actual fact that the oil pump was dry inside uh, it would just not you know start sucking on the oil anyway so i'm gonna weld this up probably put a plate over it i don't know i'll figure something out and we'll be back all right update no plate just welds build up kind of started from this from this side still adjusting the welder and then kind of spot welding uh, be, you know not like a constant weld but uh, touch and then wait for one second let, let that one weld cool down then touch again next to it and uh, keep doing that kind of like you know spot 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 just keep going <clears throat> i don't know what to, there's probably i'm sure there's a name I, I think it's spot welding but i'm not sure anyways because if you keep going and this is thin metal you just melt this so that's how it looks outside i am obviously going to clean this up to a smoother surface and this is what it looks like inside not too bad So there was a, a few splatter, uh, those little metal balls stuck everywhere. You want to make sure you get rid of every single one, you know, these guys. Because uh, it can be bad news if it gets into your oil galleries. So everywhere underneath clean this up 20 times or 30 if you got to several times gonna do it again but now it's time for the water test I'm gonna fill this up with water and leave it overnight and make sure it's not make sure it's leak free all right guys it's been about 15 hours for the water test let's see what it looks like I see I see two, at least two spots, one here and one here. This one is I think from the plug, yeah this one comes, it's coming from the plug. Weird because this is brand new, anyway so we got two spots. So one here, and maybe one here, yeah there's a little bit of water right here. Okay so I gotta dry this, these three spots off and weld it again. I'm not gonna do another water test, I'm just gonna weld it up, clean up the welds just a little bit, I don't care how this thing looks and then paint it and put it all back on. Let me show you what it looks like inside. Already rusty from the water. I did not weld it inside. This is all from the outside. All right, while this unique oil pan dries, it's gonna be a two-tone. Mm-hmm. Simply didn't have black high temperature paint. So half black, half silver. 
Look, it's taking off. There's something else I'm gonna be doing. And I recently made the decision. I'm going flex fuel. Yes, sir. To go flex fuel, to make it convenient, you gotta buy the Cobb access port 3.0. I've been running the 2.0 for the past 12 years. It's time to go. It doesn't support flex fuel, in other words, ethanol or E85. So I bought a kit. With the kit comes stickers. Yes, we definitely need these. Uh, we got, I got, uh, what is this? This is the harness for the, I believe this is the, we got Loctite. Is this for, is, that, is this the fuel? I mean, uh, yeah, the fuel pressure sending unit. This is, I'm guessing, yeah, gonna plug into the uh, fuel line, fuel rails. Zip ties. Let's put this aside. We got some, yeah, like I already mentioned. in here more stickers yes zip ties and a Allen bolt okay this is the little module this one of these connects to the TGVs the, the stock TGVs um, on the car so it's, it's a plug and play, basically. And the third and last box. So this is the actual flex fuel sensor. Okay, this detects the amount of ethanol in your fuel tank as it goes through. We're gonna, I'm gonna hook this up on the return line, fuel return line. And this will let the onboard ECU or the access port, let it know how much ethanol is currently running into the engine and adjust accordingly. So the beauty of this is I can mix fuels, pump gas between 93 and ethanol, E85, any amounts I want. So basically on my way to a racetrack, I'm going to make sure my fuel tank is empty so I can fill it up with E85. I don't need to change any settings, nothing, the computer will adjust automatically. And then on my way back, let's say I have half a tank left or, or even whatever, quarter, doesn't matter. All I gotta do is fill it up with pump gas, 93 in, in my case. And again, the ECU will adjust automatically. More connectors. Clamps. A fuel line made in the Czech Republic. Interesting. And cool at the same time. And more stickers? Yes. And this is just a bracket. Kind of smells like Windex. Some kind of a glass cleaner. All right, so I guess I can make an installation video on this flex fuel kit. I am actually looking uh, online at uh, captuning.com. So this is the website in question, Cap Tuning. And you basically go to support, installation instructions. It's pretty basic. So this is the whole kit. Well, the flex fuel kit. Uh, different kind of in different instructions for the fuel pressure uh, regulator anyways it tells you what you need and the reason why I'm showing you this is because look here first and make sure you release fuel pressure in the fuel lines I don't have to do that because I didn't have the car running as of yet it's all explained on the website so that's what you do first 
So I'm going to be looking at the same instructions as you would uh, be looking if you were to install this yourself. So first thing, you got to remove these fuel dampeners. Get yourself a set of these tools. Now the stock ones use 516s. This is ba basically what you do is you put this tool around the fuel line and you know I already took one out and you shove it in there shove the tool inside this greenish clip here and you can see inside it's got tabs on opposite you can see on the outside if you look at it from the side you can see these tabs here so the tabs the locks on the inside they're on the opposite side of the clip so that's where you want to drive your uh, your little tool in there and there is another trick to it which i'm gonna have to use on these lines because this tool oh yeah one other thing i had to cut some of this off this yellow protector just like a half an inch so this tool would actually fit now there's one more this is the return the bottom very bottom one is the feed i'm gonna have to remove the evap line here you can tell that it's just evap because it doesn't have any of these kind of connectors because there's no pressure in there so i'm gonna have to do the same thing to the bottom one cut this protective film and all that and using this tool why you need this tool here because you can't fit anything else from that side now on here I can't use the tool because of this design here this is just simply in the way there's no way I can fit this inside the line so but there's a trick and it's a very simple one and I'll show it to you right now I'm going to do that trick on both of these lines okay what you do you take two small flat screwdrivers well this used to be a screwdriver make sure the tips are clean and simply shove it in there lightly don't force it don't force anything where the tabs are what where what i showed you before on the clip that i took out You just gotta be patient. You can do it with one screwdriver and pull on it at the same time. See, no damage, you can reuse the same one. Or you can try and fit two, scru two screwdrivers at the same time and uh, basically prying those tabs out. So it clears this flare on the line here. So that's one. Much easier on this one. Okay, now the EVAP line, just your regular clip here, or clamp, I should say. Actually, maybe I can get to it without removing that EVAP line. No, I can't because I gotta cut this, shorten the yellow protective thing. Trying to pull this closer. I'm gonna to to get rid of this this plastic bracket. I can actually access this bracket from the wheel well. There you go. Just took take your regular long nose pliers and squeeze this here. I may reuse that. I don't know yet. Uh, we don't need you for now. Okay, there we go. I'm probably going to end up removing this bracket as well, but we'll see. 
anyways we kind of have access to it now so a razor what I'm doing now is just ripping it off yeah those guys with the uh, newer you know STIs the 17s 2020 or 18 whatever yeah your car is never gonna be the same after you start messing with it all right so it looks like I got access to the line now or actually room so this fits no, it's still catching that film. See, I can't squeeze it all the way. Probably for two reasons, because of that turn. And that uh, black protective rubber or plastic. So I'm gonna do a bit more cutting and ripping. Come on now, get in there. There we go, it's in. Is it out? I don't know, I can't tell. It is not out. Maybe I have to pull it out and put it in a different spot. Actually, maybe I didn't put it in the right spot. Okay, let's try this again. So the cut, the cut is on top, so I'm gonna try and go in basically 90 degrees away from it. Come on. I think I'm just slowly destroying that clip of the lock. Okay, I pushed it in a bit. There we go. Okay, it was just, yeah felt like I was actually removing it but didn't want to force it okay we're gonna have to well we're not using these anymore so these are out we got new lines I'm gonna clean those off before I install anything on them all right that's all I got for you in this one next episode is going to be all about the flex fuel kit install Keep in mind that's two kits, the fuel pressure and the, um, the flex fuel sensor. See you soon.